my father never had any negative feelings towards Pakistan, not to the people, not to the country, even the politicians. He rose above it. It's a great shame that uh, Pakistan disowned and uh, did not respect this great man. Disowned by his homeland, cast out for his faith, Dr. Abdus Salam remained defiant in the face of persecution. He rose above it and he refused to allow it to make him have negative feelings towards Pakistan. He was very positive about Pakistan. And even after he resigned his, his role in 1974 after the ordinance, he still continued to help Pakistan in as many ways that he could and still supported them at every possible opportunity. While Pakistan has removed all traces of his name, and covered up the word Muslim from his gravestone. Here in London, his name and work live on. Imperial College London, where Dr. Abdus Salam spent many years in teaching and researching, has named its new central library, the Abdus Salam Library, to honour this hero of humanity and science. So I'm delighted, delighted that we are naming the library after a member of Imperial's community who made such important contributions to the world of science. I have no doubt that the new Abdus Salam Library will inspire many people over many generations to come. Uh, so when we were thinking about who best to name it for, uh, Salam was absolutely top of the list. A, I mean, a phenomenal physicist in his own right, establishing the theoretical physics group in Imperial, but also, of course, being winning the Nobel Prize for his contributions in 1979 and, and his international work this was bringing physics and bringing science to a much broader global audience. In 1974, in Dr. Salam's homeland of Pakistan, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community was officially declared as non-Muslim, which sent a shockwave of distress through the hearts of Ahmadi Muslims worldwide, particularly in Abdus Salam himself. His diary entry on that day simply read, declared non-Muslim, cannot cope. He rose above it and he refused to allow it to make him have negative feelings towards Pakistan. Overcoming this setback, he continued to pursue his passion and in 1979, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Long forgotten and erased in his home country, his legacy, works and achievements continue to be remembered and honoured throughout the rest of the world. Science is a kind of a universal language that we all speak. I mean, whether you are in Lahore or whether you are in Mumbai, the stone falls the same way, governed by the laws of physics, by Newton's law of gravity. And it doesn't matter whether what is your religion and what language you speak. Uh, and that is why science actually is a powerful agent for bringing people together to have a common discourse. An exhibition showcasing artefacts from Dr. Salam's life and career was also on display, which inspired many staff and students alike. And we've seen even now over the last few weeks, and particularly today with the wonderful exhibition, uh, again, uh, literally hundreds of students coming through, engaging with the material, and I'm sure being inspired. You can see it in their faces. It's a very special gesture indeed. There's one other library named after my father, which is in the Central University in Tehran, in Iran. And there's an Abdus Salam library there. But of course, no one ever hears about it. And that was named in the 80s after my father. And that was a testament to the, the reflection that the Iranians had of my father. So actually, this gesture runs very deep and has a tremendous significance. Dr. Abdus Salam's life was an example of his devotion to his faith and his unwavering loyalty to Khilafat. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih V, may Allah be his helper, has outlined that now it is the task of Ahmadis in the current day and age to emulate his achievements and become the next Abdus Salam. Clearly, Hazrat Ali has, has given us the, the, the guide that he wants to have more Ahmadis focus on research, and that is a critical part of it. But combine the research with the humanitarian side, the service of humanity. It's not just research for research's sake. Look at my father's example. He used the Nobel. It was a means to an end. It gave him the profile to do more humanitarian works. There was a much bigger prize, and that was a service of humanity. Nusheran Rashid, MTN News.